when I was learning about the Taliban, um, again, a lot of my problems, if you want to call them that, are a lot closer to home. Sure. But when when the Taliban attacked in uh, 2001, um, everyone had to pay attention to that, in the U.S. at least. And I was still in school, so. Um, I understood, someone made this connection for me. They said the Taliban are the equivalent to the Ku Klux Klan. And the, how they made that connection is they said that the Taliban is a religious organization, um, but it's based on like almost like if someone was to say that the KKK is a religious organization. It's it's loosely based on religion, really based on extremism, right? In 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 terms of like the real world implications of their philosophies, the, the philosophies that they espouse, right? So it was easy for me to make sense of the Taliban as a group, um, because I can make sense of the Ku Klux Klan as a group. Um and so when I look at the conflict, because I want to be very careful with the language here. You're saying that Arabs have been attacking Jews um, over the years and all of their missions have failed um, or all the the uh, separate um, armies over the years have been attacking, trying to kind of recover land that they feel is okay. rightfully theirs or whatever their whatever the story is. Um is it the prevailing thought with respect to these governments that Jews, the Jews in this land need to be killed or, or pushed out or whatever? Um, and is that a prevailing thought of the citizens or are there some citizens who disagree with that and are comfortable on the on the Arab side, are comfortable with the arrangement and Great don't question. want because, again, there are a lot of people who are Muslim that I've met, I haven't had this conversation with them yet, but I, let me, let me, before you respond, because you know what I'm trying to say now, it's, yeah. forgive me because the question should great, roll it's out. It's a, a great question. Easier. It's a legitimate great question. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me wrap this up and put a bow on it and then I'll, I'll let, I'll listen to you. Again, what I said in the beginning was that there are a lot of people whose response to this on social media has been like, yo, I stand with Israel. I stand with Israel. These attacks are horrible and so forth and so on. Right. And you see the, the videos and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But not everybody has said that. Um, there have been some people I suspect with Muslim. Uh, b b b um, religious right. beliefs or I Islamic beliefs, or maybe they have a connection to something like that, who have not condemned this or maybe even have uh, cheered, supported. supported yes. Uh, like sort of standing with um, maybe not Hamas, but Palestine. Right. So, again, what is it? What is it like in your best guess when you're talking to the people or or maybe you've heard stories of the people? Because I can only imagine if the Ku Klux Klan or, you know, the former administration, if that level of extremism had really taken root in this country, given it a few more years. And then that would have been the representation of the U.S. I certainly wouldn't feel that way on the ground. So let's talk about the individuals so that we're a little bit more dialed in with the human beings, not necessarily the soldiers and the governments. So let's, let me talk about the governments first. Okay, please. So, okay, so um, there's been a change, I would say, in the last 20 years mm -hmm. where, yes, I would say every Arab government prior to 1973, maybe even a little after that, um, they were chanting the same mantra, um, that we're going to push the Jews into the ocean. Those were their words, right? Because Israel, one border of Israel is just the Mediterranean Sea, mm -hmm. and their chant was, we're going to push the Jews in the ocean. That was like their thing. Yeah. Um, that's changed. I would say most of the Arab governments now have come to terms that Israel is here to exist, and in fact, many of them have made peace with Israel. Okay. Uh, starting with, uh, starting with Jordan, and then Egypt, uh, and now with the Abraham Accords, we see the Gulf states, who are, by the way, stridently anti-Israel for generations, have now had a change of heart. And one could argue cynical. Yeah. And, and I believe Saudi Arabia was working toward that as well. Uh, I just wanted to add that. Yes. Go ahead. Which, which, I, which, if you ask me why they did this now, 
I think they did it because to scuttle that. the Saudi-Israeli talks. Got it. Because okay. they were essentially being aced out. They were saying, like, look, if our sponsors across the Middle East are walking away from us, we got to do something to change the, that dynamics of the geopolitical situation in the Middle okay. East. So I think that's why they did it. So I think most governments have come to terms with Israel. In fact, they've made peace with them, are creating economic cooperation with them, and realize that Israel being there is actually an advantage to them, not a disadvantage. Mm. Now, the people are a little bit different, and I think they're mixed. Yeah. I've traveled everywhere in the Arab world. I've spent a lot of time talking with them. And like most places, you have a, a split between people who are a little more moderate and people who are more extreme. Yeah. I don't know if it's 50-50. I can't put an exact number on it. It's probably 60-40 right now. The 60 want to see the destruction of Israel, 40 don't. That number has changed for the better over the years. I expect, hopefully, that it will as more peace agreements come into play. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as, as far as, as here in the U.S., even around the world, we've seen some really horrible images of people in New York, in, in Sydney, in England, uh, demonstrating support for Hamas and saying, gas the Jews. I mean, really Whoa. awful things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a gas the Jews with a chant going on across different cities around the world. Um, so there's still this ugliness that exists. Now, again, they don't represent, like, these do not represent the majority of the Islamic population in America. I don't think the majority of the Islamic population in America want to see the Jews of Israel eradicated. They may side more with the Palestinians than the Israelis. Fair enough. They're, they're, they, I, I get why they would, right? I get why Jews would side more with Israel. And I see why People or Islamic faith would side more with the Palestinians. It makes total sense. Okay. We can disagree on whether they're right, I'm right. It doesn't matter. But there is an undercurrent, and it's growing, of not just, um, look, you frankly see this from the, the extreme right and the extreme left, mm-hmm. where you're seeing a growing sense of Israel hatred, and, and Jew hatred goes hand in hand with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you saw that expressed in a lot of these horrific, ugly protests that we saw across the United States. Mm. 